Another legal setback for Governor Bevin today in his ongoing political feud with Attorney General Andy Bashir, and why some text messages are now in the spotlight. How police say they caught a man now suspected of robbing multiple stores in central and eastern Kentucky. He never met a stranger. He was caring. How friends are remembering a man who has died months after police say someone shot him outside a Lexington bar. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. More twists today in the ongoing political feud between Republican Governor Matt Bevin and Democratic Attorney General Andy Bashir. It started with a judge blocking the governor's efforts to replace the entire University of Louisville Board of Trustees. And during a news conference later, Bashir claimed the governor sent him a text message claiming the attorney general's office had become an embarrassment. WKYT Saber Rayford has the latest from Frankfurt in our top story at 6. Disagreements between Governor Matt Bevin and Attorney General Andy Bashir continue today after a judge ruled that Governor Bevin overstepped when he abolished the Board of Trustees at the University of Louisville. This was never about Bashir versus Bevin. It was always about students, faculty, and the rule of law. In today's news conference, Bashir said multiple times that his disputes with Governor Bevin were more about the law and less about politics. I don't know the governor's motives, and I don't suggest that he had uh, uh, negative uh, or, or bad motives behind it. What I know is that his actions did not comply with the rule of law. And like I said, this isn't personal, but upholding the rule of law is my job. Governor Bevin had a different reaction to the ruling. A statement his office released said, quote, Our general counsel is taking the time to properly review the ruling that just so happens to come out the day before the one year anniversary of the attorney general's opinion that A.G. Bashir and now the circuit court ignored. This is the second time in a week a court has sided with Bashir in a lawsuit against the governor. When asked if he had spoken to Bevin, Bashir said he received an unsolicited text message. The only uh, uh, communication that I've received was a nasty, nasty text message from the governor last night. Bashir later released the message. He said it reads, I would strongly suggest that you get your house in order. Your office is becoming an increasing embarrassment to the Commonwealth. Governor Bevin has 30 days to appeal the ruling. At the Capitol, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Also today, House Democrats called on Governor Bevin to release more than $4.5 million in funding for Kentucky school districts. The money is called Support Education Excellence in Kentucky, or SEEK, funding. At a news conference at the state capitol this afternoon, House Democratic leaders said the governor needs to pay that money in accordance to the budget bill that the General Assembly passed. But before the news conference, Governor Bevin posted a video on social media. There has never been an administration in this state that has ever contributed more money to education. Because I know for a fact, if we're ever to be the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be, we have got to pour into education. The Constitution of Kentucky, when it says that we shall create a system of public schools, guarantees every child the right to a public education and equal opportunities. And that's really what this is about. House Democrats claim Fayette County Schools would lose out on nearly $170,000 in state money if the shortfall is not covered. Tonight, a man who police say is behind a string of robberies in Madison County is in custody. But they say arresting William Hacker wasn't easy. As WKYT Sean Moody shows us, police say he led them on a chase in Laurel County after another robbery. The investigation has spread now from Madison County down into two southern Kentucky counties. Detectives from several agencies have been here at the London Police Department asking William Hacker about these robberies. This morning we met with officers from Berea Police, Richmond Police and the Madison County Sheriff's Office to talk about the string of Dollar General robberies. They had just identified William Hacker as their suspect. In the middle of that interview, right around noon, Berea Police Lieutenant Jake Reed got a text. Oh, hang on, guys. They just caught him. Did it? Uh, chief said they have caught the guy in London pursuit. Confirmed by a quick phone call. Okay, awesome. So uh, he's, he's in custody in Laurel County, I'm guessing? A family dollar in Manchester had just been robbed. A Clay County dispatcher called Laurel County Dispatch with the description of the getaway vehicle. A Laurel County dispatcher recognized it could be the truck from the stories that have been running on WKYT. That's probably more. Yeah, look on WKYT, they got pictures of it. 
They said the pictures on WKYT's website actually helped them get a better idea of what they might be looking for. London police officers said they saw the truck on the Hal Rogers Parkway and tried to stop it. They said it initially stopped but took off again. Police said the truck nearly hit a construction worker along the road. Uh, according to the construction worker, he had to jump out of the way. After a short chase, they said the truck crashed and they arrested William Hacker. London police have charged Hacker with fleeing and evading, resisting arrest, wanton endangerment, assault of a police officer, and criminal mischief. Detectives from those other agencies have been here at London Police Headquarters interviewing Hacker. No word yet on charges filed in those counties. In Laurel County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Police said there was a woman in the truck with Hacker. They're question, questioning her about the Manchester robbery as well. Friends and family had been hoping he would pull through, but today a man died nearly four months after investigators say someone shot him outside a Lexington bar. Skylar Ray had been receiving treatment at a respiratory care center in recent weeks. WKYT's Victor Puente talked to one of Ray's friends. Before his death, Skylar Ray spent the past four months adjusting to life with a disability. Despite that, his friends say he never stopped having a positive attitude. The 21 year old was outside of Saddle Ridge on May 29th when he was shot in the head. Since the shooting, Ray had been on a ventilator and confined to a wheelchair. Friends say he was trying to break up a fight. I could see Skylar being the type to step up and say, hey guys, you know, we don't need to, you know, fight. Michelle Sharon's son has been a friend of Ray's since the two were in middle school in Bourbon County. Skylar stayed positive, and I think his positive and being strong kept him going as long as he did go. So when she got the news this morning that he had died at a respiratory care center in Rockcastle County, her heart broke. She had already planned a charity horse ride at Carter Cave State Park on October 15th to help his family with medical expenses. Today she said that ride would go on in his honor. As a parent, it's devastating. I couldn't imagine his parents, what they go through, uh, the siblings. I mean, it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. The man police say shot Ray, Leslie Parson, is in the Fayette County Detention Center on charges of assault and being a felon in possession of a handgun. Lexington police say they won't know if those charges will be upgraded until they get the results of Ray's autopsy. Leslie Parson will be back in court this Friday for a status hearing. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Lexington police say it could be up to a week before they get the results of Ray's autopsy back from the medical examiner's office. New tonight, the trial for a Mason County woman accused of promoting the Islamic State and calling for terror attacks in the United States could be delayed. 55 year old Marie Castilli faces federal charges and a trial has been set for November. But in new court filings, both the defense and prosecutors ask for more time to prepare for the case. Federal investigators say they are trying to go through Castilli's hard drive, which has more than three terabytes of data on it, which is very large. Both sides have asked the judge to delay the trial and schedule a status conference in 60 days. The judge has not yet made a decision. It's coming down now here on Winchester Road. Rain continues to move across much of Kentucky tonight, and you'll need to keep that umbrella handy the next few days. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey says that's not all you'll need to change, right? <laughs> Coats, jackets, yeah, you name it. You need them all, and especially out there this evening. That thermometer has bottom down into the 50s across parts of central Kentucky right now. Those areas where it is raining the hardest, Lexington 58 degrees. 78 those showing up into London where we had sunshine and that front is just now getting in to the Laurel County area. We've dropped it to 59 into Moorhead without a drop of rain. And that's right along and just behind that front. 57 Mount Sterling, 58 Lexington, a little recovery back to our west behind the band of rain, but it's 80 into Prestonsburg. Look at the next band of some showers and thunderstorms cruising out of southern parts of Indiana, but the rain train firing up now from around the Lewis County area, Mason County, back into Nicholas County, downtown Paris. It's a soaker. Soaking rain getting into downtown Winchester. Most of Lexington, though the west side of town, will begin to dry it up just a little bit over the next half hour or so. That steady rain train extends toward the southwest. Nicholasville, Lancaster, hello Lincoln County and Boyle County. You've got some heavy rains, a little thunder and lightning from Campbellsville to Lebanon in Marion County. And that front again is getting into southeastern Kentucky. Expect a 10 to 15 degree drop 
southeastern Kentucky in a matter of minutes as that front zips its way through. That big low pressure center is going to continue to spin across the Ohio Valley. Quick peek at the future radar this evening showing how that band of rain slowly works into southeastern Kentucky. Many of us may clear the skies out enough tonight into central Kentucky, guys, to see some 40s. Then we go into the next few days, and I'll show you why the upper level low will be right over top of our heads and how that may bring some more bouts of nasty weather. Thank you, Chris. Some families in Montgomery County have temporarily moved as crews continue to remove arsenic contaminated dirt in their neighborhood. The state offered to help those families who live along Long Lane near Mount Sterling. Crews say it could take them months to get rid of all that dirt. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has an update on cleanup efforts and what the state is doing for people who live in the area. It'll be a massive cleanup. They're going to have to dig up the dirt, take it to a landfill, and then come back with other dirt that's clean and to fill back in. Adrian Arnold knows firsthand what a large undertaking this all is as he has a front row seat living directly across from the site. This is the first week for crews without anyone living in the homes along Long Lane. We made the offer to relocate uh, people who lived on Long Lane. Um, it's not a mandatory relocation at all. Offering an upfront reimbursement for housing and various other payments to help cover expenses during their temporary move. All but one taking the offer, and they say that woman will only be home on the weekends when work typically is not going on. Work that they hope to have done within 90 days. Obviously, this is a huge project taking place out here along this narrow roadway, which is why state officials say they are extremely grateful that folks out here took them up on that offer. Several of the properties are not in an area that we're going to be doing active cleanup. But yet they would still have the impacts of the additional truck traffic and heavy equipment operating. So they would uh, they would still be disrupted by the activity. In Montgomery County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The state is coordinated with the sheriff's office to make sure an off-duty deputy is on site overnight and on the weekends as security for the properties and belongings people left behind. The University of Kentucky has released the results of a campus survey on student safety. The Campus Attitudes Toward Safety, or CATS, survey also asked students about sexual assault and if they knew what to do if something negative happened to them. In the survey, most students said that they feel safe on UK's campus, especially during the daytime hours. But students say there's still room for improvement. I know that there's places on campus that you can go and, like, and talk to people, but I don't actually know where those are. They just kind of need to get the word out more and maybe even put security out at night just to make people feel more safe. And you can find the complete results of this year's CATS survey on WKYT.com. Another reminder tonight from health leaders for you to go ahead and get that flu shot next on WKYT News at 6. What they're saying about the early flu cases in Kentucky. And then let the madness begin for UK basketball fans in the rain tonight. Why hundreds of them are now lined up and in tents outside Memorial Coliseum. There are more signs tonight that the flu season in Kentucky is getting an early start. The state cabinet for health and family services now says there have been 19 confirmed cases of the flu in Kentucky. That is up from 15 last week. Health experts say flu season usually doesn't begin until October or November. They're saying you should go ahead and get a flu shot if you haven't already. Some UK fans started lining up a few days ago, but early this morning, the official Big Blue Madness campout began outside Memorial Coliseum. And there they go, hundreds of fans racing to secure their spots in line and set up their tents, their chairs, and get those blankets ready for the weather Chris says is coming. Those we talk to say they don't mind the wait. I, I've got it all cozy in there. We've got the memory foam under us and got sleeping bags. And we will be got a little toasty. lantern. She must watch Chris's forecast. She knows what to expect. UK leaders say there are more than 300 tents outside Memorial Coliseum. They say they have room for about 400 tents. Tickets will be handed out Friday night at 10, and Big Blue Madness, that's scheduled for October 14th. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. And that memory foam is going to come in handy along with the jackets, the waterproof tents, because it is chilly and it is rainy in downtown Lexington right now. Cold front, let's find it. 
How about southeastern Kentucky, upper 70s to around 80? Yet we get into central Kentucky where it is raining and we are behind the front, mid to upper 50s showing up. And what's happening with this front as it slides through, you're going to see a 15 degree drop in a matter, in some cases, in a matter of minutes. Quite the cold front that is on the move out there. Live Sky Cam in Lexington. Notice how just off the cam here toward the west, guys, brightening a little bit. The steadier rains are slowly tapering across Lexington. 58 degrees right now. Humidity obviously way up there. It's just a damp and a chilly evening across the heart of central Kentucky. Here's your Defender Radar Network. Look at that line of showers and, yeah, some thunder and lightning showing up here into Casey County. Lebanon, Marion County, and across the Campbellsville area, Taylor County. So, uh, folks around Boyle County, Stanford, Lincoln County, Lancaster, you may hear some rumbles over the next little bit. Raining really hard on the east side of Lexington, Nicholasville, the west of Fayette County, beginning to see a little ray of sunshine. Richmond, heaviest rains are just now getting on into town. Likewise, here into Winchester and Mount Sterling, across Fayette County. Uh, on that sky cam, we were noticing a little brightening of the sky to the west as the steadier rain slowly. Uh, shift uh, to our east. We've picked up better than a half inch of rain so far this afternoon in Lexington. We could use a little drink, and we've got it out there. We're going to get more over the next few days. Owingsville to Carlisle. Here's our front into southeastern Kentucky. You can actually see it. See that little narrow band of what looks like sprinkles? That's the actual cold front that is ahead of the rain. And you're going to get that 15 degree drop like that as the front makes its way through. Another little band of some showers and storms crossing the Ohio River. Everything going counterclockwise around that low. Let's fast forward to tomorrow afternoon, roughly 5 o'clock. Put the winds into the mix, showing the cool air, kind of dumbbelling in under that upper level low that is on top of Kentucky. It settles its way into southeastern Kentucky on Friday, puts the brakes on, says, all right, let's go back to the west a little bit. Now we go into Friday night and Saturday, that low says, all right, let's slowly go back to where we started this whole mess, into the Ohio Valley, and then eventually by Sunday, it's up into the Great Lakes again. That's a cutoff low. Just sits over top of you, doesn't move a whole lot, gives you some gusty wind, some chilly temperatures, and a round or two or three or four of some showers and some thunderstorms. Not all day rains. 11 this evening. Still some showers in eastern Kentucky, where we try to cool it down a little bit, uh, clear the skies out, I should say. 40s will show up tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, not everybody sees rain, but some showers and storms will be on the move. Let's go into tomorrow night. Stuff weakens a little bit, fires back up into Friday afternoon as that low continues to spin across the Ohio Valley. Uh, 60s will be likely for those highs over the next few days. Here's the seven day forecast. We keep this pattern going into Saturday, guys. That low heads back to where it got its roots into parts of the Great Lakes, and that'll get on out of town by Sunday. All right, time to make some wardrobe trenches tonight. Yeah, definitely. Switch get over the, from summer. It's the, gone. Get the fall stuff out. All right. Flip flops away. There you go. Thanks. Pete Rose not giving up on the Hall of Fame. Well, he is not. Pete making another appeal. We'll tell you about his latest move. And Mark Stoops commenting on the departure of one of his running backs. Did it come as a surprise? That's next on WKYT. Mark Stoops going on the SEC teleconference earlier today and commenting on the departure of running back Michael Horton. Horton left the team yesterday after seeing hardly any playing time this season. Boom Williams, Benny Snell, and JoJo Kemp all ahead of him. Today on the SEC teleconference, Stoops said the loss is not an issue with so much depth at running back, and Horton's departure didn't come as a surprise. Yeah, we did see it coming. Um, it's just one of those situations where for whatever reason, he gets behind on the depth chart and um, has to, to earn the trust of, of the coaches and, and the players as he moves forward. Um, and, you know, he was starting to do that and doing a better job and being more accountable. And, uh, and then some other guys emerged. So uh, it was only one football. It'll be homecoming for Alabama down at Bryant-Denny Stadium this weekend, a place where Kentucky has never won in seven tries. Nick Saban said he's impressed with UK's offensive big play capability. Mark Stoops has done a really good job of sort of finding out who they are and how they want to play, and uh, they played really well in the last two games. Uh, really good skill players on offense, really good running backs, wide receivers. Um, you know the stats. They're explosive guys. Uh, they have pretty impressive performances to this point. 
And it will be the toughest game of the season so far. The number one ranked team in the country, Alabama, 7 o'clock kickoff on ESPN on Saturday. Pete Rose has appealed directly to the Baseball Hall of Fame to restore his eligibility to be elected. The hit king wrote a seven-page letter to the Hall of Fame's president arguing that it wasn't then-Commissioner Bargiamati's intention to keep him out of the hall when Rose accepted his ban from baseball. Rose's attorney said new Commissioner Rob Manfred, denying Rose's reinstatement last December, opens the door for the new argument. And Tim Tebow making quite a debut in pro baseball today. In his first at bat down in Port St. Lucie, Florida, Tebow homered to left center field. Tebow hasn't played baseball since he was in high school. He's getting his shot with the Mets instructional league team. Tebow is 29, still an analyst for the SEC Network. Not going to give up that broadcasting job just yet. Sam Amber, back to you. Well, if he keeps hitting home runs. Yeah, he makes it look so easy. They have another job. <laughs> Final check of your first alert forecast is next. Then on the CBS Evening News, a baseball fan almost strikes out when he tried to propose to his girlfriend, but there is a happy ending. We're on rainbow alert right now in the Lexington area. All right, we'll see you next live on the CW Lexington. Amber with a cat story and the feud with the governor and the attorney general. That more next.